This one time, I spent $20 on a cup of coffee. And it was incredible. The explosion of flavors my mouth was met with was a revelation of sorts. A moment where I understood that coffee could be complex. But what made this different? Why was it so good? I asked the barista who prepared it for me, and he told me the coffee was from a farm in Panama called Hacienda La Esmeralda, where it begins its life as a seed to this fruit called a coffee cherry. Once the cherries are ripe, the farmers pick them by hand. They do this because the trees live upon steep hills where machinery is a hard time reaching. High elevation like this is key to killer coffee. Now once the cherries are picked, they are sent to a wet mill where they undergo a process that uses water to remove the mucilage and cherry fruit from the seed. These washed or wet processed coffees are lively and refreshing tasting. Now knowing all this about coffee made me feel connected to it as an agricultural product, as produce, as something grown by someone worlds away with the same passion for coffee as I have. Now once this Panamanian flavor bomb is dry, it's sent to roasters all around the world. These are the men and women responsible for not ruining what nature has most lovingly created. The roaster responsible for my $20 coffee made something very clear to me. The best coffees should be roasted lightly. That's right, folks. French roast, dark roast, Italian roast. All of this is akin to taking a juicy filet mignon and making it into charcoal. All the sweetness is simply lost. So now you're wondering, where can you get coffee like the stuff this guy's obviously crazy over? First of all, skip the supermarket. I guarantee you that stuff is stale and over-roasted. Find yourself a local roaster or buy coffee online from a company that provides information like the kind that I'm telling you tonight. First off, look for the date that it's been roasted. If it's not on the bag, then it's not fresh. Secondly, look for the name of the farm. Simply labeling a coffee Panama would be like calling a Pinot Noir from Napa Valley simply American. It tells us nothing. The variety of coffee that changed my life is from Ethiopia, and it's called a geisha. But in the well-kept land of Hacienda La Esmeralda, these coffees truly shine. Now I know this might all sound like a lot of information or maybe a little geeky. If you take with you even a fraction of what I'm talking about tonight, then I feel like I've done my job. Just remember, the more you understand the factors that go into producing coffee, the more you can appreciate the uniqueness of every bean. But what good would all that uniqueness do if it's not brewed properly? The Mr. Coffees of this world are doing a great disservice to even the most mediocre Java. They simply don't get the water hot enough. This results in coffee that tastes sour, or as us coffee professionals call it, under-extracted. <laughs> Meaning that uh, all that goodness the bean has naturally isn't brought into the brew. So now you're wondering, how do we bring it into the brew? Well, the barista that made my $20 cup used something I'm sure you've all heard of. It's called a French press. First, he took these well-grown, lightly roasted coffee beans and ground them up. It's important to grind right before you brew, or it loses all of its aromatics. Secondly, he added clean, filtered tap water to the press, added the coffee, gave it a good stir, and let it steep for four minutes. Now, don't plunge it yet. First, he took two spoons and skimmed the foam floating on the top. This is going to result in a cleaner brew. Then, you simply put the plunger on, press it down, and make sure to pour all of the liquid out of the press. Or, the coffee is going to stay in contact with the water and it will become over-extracted, which will have this bitter, ashy taste and is like the opposite of the problem we were talking about before. So, here I am. I've just spent $20 on a cup of coffee. I wonder how best to enjoy my sizable investment. I asked the barista, and he told me, just the way it is. And I think that's the most important lesson that I've learned, that the best coffees in this world should be enjoyed how they're meant to be. No cream, no sugar, just black. Thank you.